Over the last week, I've been bombarded with angry messages from a hateful Rick Shields mob. And to all those fans, I just want to take time to make a heartfelt apology. To absolutely nobody! The double champ does what the f he wants! Alright, let's get into this. So there were quite a few people that missed the satire in the first video and predictably there was no response from Rick or Guy. But as promised, in that first video I said if there's anyone that's interested in a further analysis of Rick's golf swing then please comment and maybe there was like a couple. So what I'm going to do in this video is further break down Rick's golf swing and give you guys at home a few key takeaways so you don't have to fall into the same traps that Rick has fallen into. So with all that being said, this is my completely unsolicited advice. And this is how to fix Rick Shields' Ziz golf swing. We're gonna start with another look at his action because I briefly touched on it in the first video, but I think it's probably best to do a little recap. And just to show you some of the things I was talking about in the first video, which were the main one, the club face is very active and he drops it very deep on the inside on the way down. And there's a couple of things there which are really hard to time. Now posture and grip, I'm gonna to touch on in a minute because I think there's potentially a few things that we could change here. But what we're gonna pick up on is the fact that the club face is very active early the club's got inside the hands. The club face is, is pretty much pointing vertical to the sky. And this first move down, he gets it very deep. So the club falls behind him. So club face open, club is deep and it drops behind him. From here, the body will stop and look how active, look how active the hands are. So when you get to this position here, you'd like to see the club face, you know, having some sort of relationship to the body, but in this instance, it's just chucked. What I was explaining in the first video, when you get the club face open and then you get it deep and you're rolling and your body stopping and you're having to time the body stopping with the club face rolling, it's just a very hard thing to time consistently. If he just changed a couple of things, I feel like it had put him in a position where he wasn't as reliant on timing and that would make the golf swing easier and it'd be easier to perform on a more consistent basis, let's say. All right, let's show you in person. Rick gets the face rolling open and then he drops it inside and then his body has to stop. And then he has a lot of excess club rotation and the club ends up over here. From what I've seen, he goes out and shoots 85 or he'll shoot one over when his timing's good and he has a feel for it on the day. So firstly, we're gonna to touch on posture and grip. Rick's posture generally looks like this, very straight back, puts quite a bit of pressure on your hamstrings, your glutes and your lower back. I would love to see what happens if he just relaxed his posture a bit. And by that, I mean, stand up tall, bend your knees a bit, lean forward in a relaxed way, let your arms hang. Like that kind of move where your pelvis is a bit more tucked under, because when your pelvis is tucked under, it can move into positions. But if you start with it, really tense back like this it hasn't really got anywhere to go unless you, unless you're super mobile and it's hard to stay in that position so generally what you see from guys that are like this is that they'll go like this second thing i'd like to consider before we moved into talking about anything to do with the golf swing his right hand grip is arguably a little weak so very much over that can encourage the face to get open early. So anything to discourage him from getting that face super active early, I think could be interesting. So I'd potentially bring that up, see how that posture feels. And then let's perhaps just strengthen the right hand a tiny bit, just to get it from being so much over to slightly more neutral. And then we move into the actual action itself. So I'd just like to get rid of this over active club face. This is probably something he's done all his life, but he gets it open early. And then it's a big closing motion, which as I said, is quite hard to time. Let's just get this takeaway moving together. Like it's rare you'll see guys on tour flip that face open early. So if we could encourage this first move to be somewhat 
one piece, so not that much going on, just a bit of a turn, right? So from this angle, just a bit of a turn, that club face would then start forming a relationship with the body. So it wouldn't be getting this way, so it'd be staying square. Now, the second thing is a downswing move. Now, I think it can be especially hard to change movement in the downswing because it's happening so fast. So I've got this drill, which I feel like would really help Rick. So you get the alignment rod, shove it through your belt buckle. If Rick tried to do this at the moment, every time, his lower body moves quick and he drops it. So that club would get behind him and it would hit the alignment rod. So I'd like to get Rick doing this drill, starting off very slowly with like a wedge. All right, so what this is gonna encourage is for the arms to stay in front of the body. You can still obviously lead with the lower body, you can still make a powerful move, but if you get stuck, the club gets behind you, or if the lower body outraces the upper body, then you're just gonna hit the club. So it's pretty much gonna kill two birds with one stone. Rick gets quick with the hips and he drops it. So this drill, honestly, is perfect for Rick. And honestly, for the first lesson, that's as far as I would go. Play around with posture, potentially play around with the grip. Try to get a bit more of a one piece takeaway. So stop that early rotation of the club face to try and get control of the club face throughout the golf swing and get him trying that drill and just see what happens. We need a relationship with the upper body and the lower body, then it's gonna be easier. And if you can get the club face moving in some sort of relationship with the body, even easier again. So that's as far as I'm gonna go. Let me know what you think and subscribe for more coaching content, but also to follow what I'm doing in my pro tournaments as well. I